When I was little, my parents put me into a, like a summer camp one year, and I guess at first I didn't really like it, but then they took me back again the next year, and I really loved it, and I've done it ever since. I, I love being able to flip and just like fly through the air and do all the skills that we do. When I was younger, I, it was always my dream to be Olympic champion, and it's a lot of little girls' dreams, but to know that I'm working hard and that it might come true, it, it makes my day. Rebecca and her family moved to Texas from Michigan in 2001. She immediately headed to Woga to enroll. Training with future Olympic champions, Rebecca was a natural. She soon started to make a name for herself at the junior level, winning countless titles. Transworld Sport first caught a glimpse of her talent in 2006. We witnessed a 13-year-old brass training alongside Nastia. She had so much talent, you know, right away, right from the start, and I was kind of training up toward the Olympics, and um, as she got older and as she got better in gymnastics, we were training side by side, and even though we never competed against each other, she was always a junior and I was a senior, she pushed me because she's got that mentality where, you know, she's so strong, um, she can just do number repetition after repetition, and that, you know, pushed me, um, somebody younger than me that was, you know, doing say, maybe more numbers than me, so I think, um, you know, a big part of my success was having teammates like her. Rebecca's best discipline is the beam, an event in which she won silver at the 2010 World Championships in the Netherlands. Unlike Nastia, Rebecca is a power gymnast. She earns more points for the difficulty of her routines rather than for her artistic performances. It's something that her coach, Valerie Lukin, has been happy to see develop. Well, Rebecca is totally different gymnast, obviously, than Nastya. She's more like a Carly Patterson, actually. She's very explosive, very quick, and very strong athlete. She is very talented also. She works just as hard as Nastya. Obviously, she grew up in the same system and back to back with Nastya. And Nastya still actually in the gym and working right next to her. And, uh, well, you know, like I said to her, you know, we've done this before, we're doing it now. She, things should, should work just fine. It's great to have him as my coach. He knows what I can do and he always pushes me and he helps me through the hard times when something goes wrong and he's a great coach, yeah. In her two years at senior level, Rebecca is yet to travel to a global competition fully fit. An ankle injury sustained late last year threatened to ruin her world championship dream. The fact that she made it to Rotterdam at all was down to her fierce determination. Being a full-time athlete means that Rebecca has little time off. Due to her arduous training schedule, she's completing her education at home. We work out Monday through Thursday, four hours in the morning and three hours at night. And then on Friday and Saturday, we just work out in the morning. And then Sunday, we have off. And it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> For most gymnasts, the Olympics are the one opportunity to compete in front of a truly global audience. And the women's all-around competition is one of the highlights of the Games. For Rebecca, the pressure of being one of the favorites will be compounded by the previous successes of Carly and Nastia. With 18 months to go before London, she's doing her best to push their achievements to the back of her mind. I don't think about it that much. It's always in the back of my head, obviously, but I'm trying to stay with this year and one competition at a time. A victory for Rebecca Bross in the women's all-around competition would not only give the U.S. a third straight Olympic title, it would also see the World Olympic Gymnastics Academy continue its incredible record. You know, I think she just needs to do the same thing she's been doing and um, follow her coach's path, and uh, I think she's in a good spot.
I mean, I know I'm going to be in London, whether I compete or not, but hopefully being able to see Rebecca um, go for that title would just um, mean, mean a lot to me. And not just me, but um, to my dad, too, because I know he's worked hard after the Olympics. I got a little bit of a break for the past uh, year and a half. You know, I haven't been heavily training, but he came back in the gym the day we got home and, you know, started coaching the girls, and that's why Rebecca is where she is right now. It's really special for me to see that and for me to see kind of her carrying our legacy from Carly in 2004 to me in 2008 and now seeing Rebecca on the rise in 2012 is really cool. Continuing our series from the archives on extreme sports athletes, we